it's with pleasure now that I introduce our president, incoming president, Dr. Suzanne Klimberg, who will wrap the session up with maintenance of certification. And what we'll do after that is we'll have a period of time for question and answers uh, in case you have them. And so Dr. Klimberg will be discussing maintenance of certification. She's the Muriel Balsam Cone Chair in Breast Surgical Oncology and Pro Professor of Surgery and Pathology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences and the Director of the Breast Cancer Program in the Winthrop Rockefeller Cancer Institute in Little Rock. Dr. Klimberg. <laughs> Now, if you're leaving and you haven't gotten your MOC, you better come back. They just warned me. <laughs> I get used to it. Uh, MOC is an initiative by the boards, and it's made up of all the boards, the member boards. And what is maintenance of certification? You need it, and you need it right now. It's a program that continues for continuous learning and improvement, and goes beyond the 10-year uh, recertification snapshot. So you. You have to do things in between your exams. Documents that uh, the diplomats are maintaining the necessary competencies to provide quality care and create the uh, ABMS and its member boards to provide a more frequent and comprehensive evaluation. So why M MOC? Up, uh, upholds board certification as a recognized surgeon-defined quality of care, allows diplomats to formally demonstrate their commitment to lifelong learning, and gives diplomats a proactive position in what they're doing. MOC is supported by a number of associations. And so it's a, a, not a global, but at least a United States uh, whole view. The board uh, movement began in 1970. And uh, you know the, there is evidence that the need to continually monitor uh, pay, uh, people and surgeons performing surgery. And it was founded in 1937, the American Board of Surgeons, by the leading surgical societies to differentiate well-trained surgeons from doctors in general practice. And it's reform to protect the public and improve the specialty. One of the first boards to institute recertification was the American Board of Surgery. And it's, uh, it helps us ensure self-regulation before we're regulated even more. So the... Uh, so we still have the uh, six competencies, uh, uh, medical knowledge, patient care and procedure skills, interpersonal and communication skills, professionalism, practice-based learning and improvement, and system-based practice. So there's four parts to MOC. Uh, and the first is professional standing, lifelong learning, uh, cognitive experience and evaluation and practice. Now, uh, we're going to just give you an overview of what these improvements require. So professional standing, it's a full and unrestricted medical license, so the usual thing, hospital privileges, uh, and professional references. So all of these things are the usual things that apply, and it's a no-brainer. Part two is the one that's kind of the sticky point, uh, at least for the, uh, surgical oncology uh, and what we're looking at, lifelong learning and self-assessment. So you're required to have 90 hours of a part one over a three-year period. Now, you can wait to the last minute, and that's what we like to do. But 60, uh, uh, 60 of that has to be uh, uh, requ uh, requires self-assessment. So it, you can have 30 of it can be something else, like going to this meeting or whatever. But you have to have 60 hours or 20 hours a year of self-assessment. Uh, and that's, uh, you, have to, you have to get a score of 75% or higher when you take those exams, but most of the uh, people doing uh, part two uh, let you take the exam over to you get it because we just want you to have the knowledge. Uh, and at this point, there's no ABS approval uh, for, uh, is necessary for self-assessment activities, but they, they do have to be CME uh, category one. So, and uh, new this year, that if you've just taken your research and passed it, which 96% of people do, if you've done that, then that can count towards 60 hours of the part, uh, of the, uh, uh, part two uh, self-assessment. So uh, diplomats can then apply uh, for category one uh, with, with that. Now, uh, some of the resources you can see here and new this year for this, that we've uh, been working on all year long. Uh, you've seen the CSAP, I hope, when you registered. CSA, uh, C, uh, not so, CSAP is what the American College does. We have SOSAP now that, that Ron Weigel uh, from the Education Committee has worked hard with a, with a lot of different people to uh, put forth. 
and uh, that's uh, gonna is very exciting. And we have uh, the uh, part two that the journal is coming out with. So you also have here the virtual meeting. It'll be on uh, 12 hours after, and there's a, a multiple sites, at least five sessions that have CME already that you can get at the meeting or in the meeting. Uh, there's over 300 videos from former sites on the, on the, on the uh, website, and uh, it's an estimated uh, uh, six to 12 hour turnaround, so at least 12 uh, you'll have it made. And the mini courses are on there too. You can do it from your iPhone, it's fully searchable. You can uh, content dis uh, discovery, uh, and uh, uh, you can get it from your iPhone here and from your iPad. And uh, so you can then just log on to get your part two maintenance of certification. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible here at the meeting to get as much as, as you can. But on the, you can, if you've missed those sessions, you can go back, or it was blacked out. You can, or you had a fire. You can go back and get those credits. Uh, we, so that's the MOC Cafe. You can go right down there now and log on to the sessions you went to, answer the questions, and then get your credits. So EMOC. And uh, so this is just what it would look like. And then you can print out your certificate or you can email it to yourself. Now here's SOSAP and that's available for a discounted price here because it's going to come out in early spring here and it's, it's set up just like CSAP is. Question, answer, and then explanations of the right answers as well as the wrong answers heavily referenced and this has gone through multiple areas of peer review. Uh, we started uh, this uh, in two years ago. Uh, like everything that is good, uh, it takes a long time, not quite as long as board certification. But uh, so this is a, we're very excited about this. You can get this after the meeting uh, too, uh, but not at a discounted price. Uh, this is also, this is coming out this month uh, for March. Uh, this is a project I've been working on for a long time. This is uh, off with, I'm uh, deputy editor of the Annals of Surgical Oncology, and uh, we are picking uh, four to six articles a month in different sites, uh, GI, melanoma, the usual high uh, uh, publication sites, and uh, breast, et cetera. And so we're picking uh, those variable articles on different topics. Now, this is a little bit different MOC because we plan on pushing it to you. So in your email, you will receive an email with a link to the first article. Uh, for example, it's a very nice article on uh, diversity of stage three melanoma. And you see the learning objectives will come up and you go over those. Then you'll read the article, which is by one of our members. And then you will answer the questions again and then you will be told what the right answers are. And you can take the test again if you want uh, until you get it right. So, and, and most of these will have some kind of, one of the questions will be on staging because we think we can upgrade care if we just get people to stage correctly. So hopefully we can all stage correctly, but not necessarily. And this will be uh, available not only to uh, our members, but also uh, to anyone who wants to take advantage of it. So for the first year only, it's free. So, <laughs> so you can take this now and avail yourself of it and then uh, as people get used to it, we work out the kinks, then, then, then we charge the money. So uh, the target audience is you or those specializing in oncology or are heavily involved in diagnosis, treatment, and management. You get a CME per article. We each each uh, week we will also do a, a published film. Of course, the ASO uh, electronically publishes films with an abstract uh, or a, it's like a mini paper. And so we're going to be doing that. Uh, one of those articles will be that, and there's one on this month. Uh, this was just approved um, on Wednesday, so it will be out soon. Uh, and so, again, uh, you get to retake it. Part three is your uh, cognitive experience. Uh, uh, may be taken starting three years prior to the certificate expiration. Uh, so this is your research exam, and, but it's good for 10 years, uh, including those three years prior, actually. Uh, you have to take the exam, though. You must have the MOC in place. Uh, uh, part four is another sticking uh, problem for surgical oncology. It's evaluation of performance and practice, ongoing participation in a national, regional, or local outcomes database or quality assessment program. Now, the problem is, uh, for me, is that, uh, for example, the a uh, not some 
I don't want to, there's log bases that we can log on to uh, that uh, don't actually ask the questions that we want to ask. Uh, for example, I do want to know if my patients have any infection, but that's not really the key thing that we want to know for particular surgical oncology outcomes. It's, you know, for breast, it's not going to, it's so low that it's not going to vary that much. So we want to ask particular questions to breast. So what, uh, what we want to do is uh, try to figure out how best to help us with uh, that in our, our, our uh, uh, SSO. So uh, these are the different log databases that you can log on to, but none of them, uh, some of them require uh, people to go through your records and you don't have to do much of anything. Uh, but those, uh, you know, those are not surgeon specific in terms of what you'd really want to look at to me. They can be uh, certain things like infection and so on can be easily done. But the other is, for example, the, this uh, uh, American Society of Breast Surgeons has the mastery, which is very specific to breast. You, it's very easy. You log on and you just do three variables. And it is also uh, uh, linked to part four. Uh, but you want, uh, they require that you put uh, uh, all your cases on there. Uh, I think that's a problem for us uh, and, uh, to get all your cases on. And you don't have to be, the, you know, we need to do MOC, but you, you can get a snapshot just like you do time management studies in, in the workplace. You can get a snapshot of what people are doing. And the, the American Board of Plastic Surgery uh, what what uh, is for certification there is uh, you can link part four and part two, but you, what you do is you have a learning module. You put on 10 cases, you do your last 10 cases of total skin sparing mastectomy, whatever the question is, whatever the module is. You put those on, you answer the, what you think the, uh, the guidelines say. You, so you have to have development of guidelines, which SSO has been slow to do. So we're going to get the disease site committees will be starting to do that. That's one of their tasks. And what we do is ask, uh, we look at the uh, uh, markers that would give us an indication of quality. So getting into the quality arena. And then you, uh, you do your answer questions, do your module, answer your questions again. And then what the plastic surgeons do, you do a free script of how you're going to change your practice. Then you come back three months later, do the same thing again, and see if you have improved or not. And so that's the module. And uh, they actually award 20 credits for doing all of that, 20 credits of MOC. So you don't have to make it hard. I don't think it's particularly a productive to necessarily put all your cases on unless you want to do research on it. Uh, and I don't want to be the... Um, uh, research, I've done that, I don't want to be the research <laughs> assistant uh, for one of these databases, especially if I'm not going to get really useful data on the type of surgery that I do. So uh, Sandra Wong did a task force, uh, this, which she reported to us uh, last Wednesday on outcomes of measurements and quality metrics. And just a summary that, uh, you know, the pros and cons, SSO members could endorse existing registries. Uh, but uh, the pros are no uh, lower upfront development costs. We wouldn't have much effort into that. And cons are less ability to direct priorities for data collection and management. Uh, they have approached, uh, for example, the ACS approached us about the, the ACS case log or the surgical a ACS log, surgical oncology ACS log. Uh, but, you know, we would have less control over that. The SSO could develop its own data platform. Well, that comes, the pros are that we would have the intellectual property over that. Uh, we could potentially, you know, you could uh, get that potentially funded and integrated into training programs. If you log on, especially we could research that data, especially if it, uh, it was a very specific question. To just collect all the data, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but if we want to answer a specific question together, especially on rare tumors, we could answer a question quickly. We could pick out the most important things to ask about that because we have the experts that are doing those cases and that could get you your MOC. So it, it solves a lot of problems and we could link the articles or modules to the database so that when you click on, you uh, enter your cases and then you get a, you get a recent article on that on, uh, and a module on that. So we could, we, there's a number of different ways we can do it. A uh, problem with doing your own database, of course, is upfront cost. But we'll, we're going to try and answer this co uh, question this year and, and get something for our members to be uh, compliant as quickly as possible and as easily as possible. 
And so uh, the reasons for us doing this is cancer registry and research quality measure because there, we can pick the quality measures uh, that are most important to our patients. And they're not the same as general surgery patients. Uh, and so we can do quality improvement projects off of this. We get part four and potentially part two and four could be linked. So when you transition to MOC, if you have uh, certified or recertified in any ABS specialty after July 1st, 2005, you're going to need to do MOC. Uh, Fabrizio, are you doing MOC? No. Oh, don't you want to do it on a voluntary basis? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Until then, the traditional <laughs> recertification requirements uh, for every specialty to apply. MOC runs in three-year cycles. Diplomats submit information about their MOC activities at the end of each cycle. Uh, the ABS will contact diplomats when the action is required, so they'll let you know. And so this is uh, sort of what it looks like. Uh, your recertification year, you're supposed to be ongoing in practice, but you can save it all up at the end and, and buy C, uh, SOSAP and get it all done, because we'll be renewing that every three years. But the idea is to do it on an ongoing basis, and that's why we're going to try to push articles to you on a monthly basis so that you can keep up and it won't be a problem, and to provide as much part two here as possible. And you can get in and, uh, the uh, ABS website and do a personalized timeline. And then uh, the other thing I want to bring out is that uh, there's an online form, but the diplomats have until December 31st for your, for your uh, uh, July 1st deadline. So you have a little grace period there where you can get everything in. And it'll be, uh, you can track it on the ACS member portal as well. And, uh, no and right now, there's no documentation for part four uh, that you've actually done this, but they are uh, uh, going back and sampling a certain percent of sites to make sure that, or members, to make sure that they are doing what they said they were doing. Um, if you have multiple uh, certificates, the MOC can count acro across those. Uh, if it's a specific exam, though, you have to take each specific exam. Uh, while in fellowship, you do have to do MOC. And how many, how many of the fellows in the room knew that? Uh, that's right. So you are required, and, uh, uh, but your training fulfills part two and part four, but you've got to document it. So you've got to fill out the online form. So it's okay, I can scare you for a minute. Now the real, uh, the real uh, problem in the room and uh, ABS is uh, documented uh, what you have to do to re-enter into MOC. Uh, and if you fail to keep up with it, you will become uncompliant and you will not be able to sit for recertification. Uh, and you may, uh, require, uh, may be required to do additional requirements of MOC. So just keep up with it and you, you know there could be penalties with that. Uh, uh, and then the other thing about MOC and the different uh, sites, and not many uh, have done and taken advantage of this uh, yet, but you can get extra payment if you are, for some of the insurance companies, if you uh, meet a certain requirement uh, or if the registry meets a certain requirement, and that comes from uh, your uh, society. Uh, benefits, improved learning and self-assessment. Relevant measures of care formally documents a diplomat's commitment to lifelong learning and practice improvement will reduce multiple redundant quality assessments, overall improve patient care. And you provide a more comprehensive, continuous assessment of physician competencies and allows the surgeon to assume a proactive role instead of a reactive role. And so this is our progress so far from the SSO in the past year, and there's more to come. I always like to say that uh, it's uh, treatment by chance in the United States now because, or anywhere in the world because it depends on where you go to get your operation, who you might see, and they could be a block apart, but you might get a totally different recommendation. And so the idea behind MOC and board certification and especially surgical on board, uh, uh, oncology board certification is bring the level of everyone up to, uh, to a certain uh, qualification and, and competency. Thank you very much.